Hello everyone, welcome to Star Seed Tarot. I am Charlene Lazat. In today's video, we are going to be getting a love prediction for you. What's coming up next in love? What can you expect? We've got four different decks to choose from. We're going to be finding out a time frame, their zodiac signs, how they may look, where you may meet, the potential of your connection, and so much more. If you like picking with amulets from Starseed Jewels, which is my jewelry line, I'm going to add amulets right now. All right, here are the four decks with different amulets from Starsea Jewels. These are all designed by me and handmade here in-house in Toronto. We just launched a new website where you can now earn Starsea points. Every time you collect a new amulet, you are actually earning points for a discount for your next purchase. So without further ado, let me walk you through what the amulets are for the decks. So with deck number one, with which is the Ethereal Visions deck, we've got Sol. It's got beautiful moonstone. It's got sunstone, rose quartz, citrine. Group number two, which is one of my favorite decks, Tinseltown Tarot, has Divina. Divina's got rose quartz, lavender amethyst, angelite. Group number three is the first deck I ever got. I can't remember who it's by, but it's very similar to Raider Waite. And that deck has this beautiful piece called Bridget, which has strawberry quartz, rose quartz, Green Adventurines, and Pearl. And group number four is called the Dark Forest Tarot deck, and it's got Juno as its amulet with this beautiful aquamarine and rose quartz and gold filled finishes. Now go ahead and pick the group or deck that you are called to the most and take a look at the description box below for the timestamp that corresponds with your reading. I will see you over there. See you soon. All right, group number one, this is going to be your reading. If you pick Sol, you can go ahead and purchase Sol in the description box below over at Star Sea Jewels. Or if you have those crystals at home, I encourage you to wear them because you're obviously called to them for a particular reason. Now, let's dive in and see. There's so much to uncover, and I am going to shuffle on camera for you, okay? We're going to dive deep. We're going to get a whole story here as to who this person is, where they're coming in from, what you can expect. Beautiful, okay. Let's take a look here and see what is going on. We're obviously gonna pull out more cards. This is just what we're gonna start off with. I want to make sure you can see these nicely. You know, I'm sitting here and I'm like, I'm, I'm just really tuning into the energy of your reading and the messages that are coming in. And one of the things I want to mention to you is that apart from the fact that you pick Sol, and Sol is really about, you know, the heart chakra, the solar plexus, uh, this is about you having an unwavering faith. And rather than being action-based when it comes to love, the universe, your highest self, is asking you at this time to really just pump the brakes on how much you are doing and open yourself up to the idea of receiving without needing to be in continual action. There's an energy here of receptivity, of sitting back and calling things in rather than feeling like you need to be going out and get them. Now, I'm not sure whether you are male or female, if you tap into divine feminine energy or divine masculine energy. However, the big message I'm getting here is that you need to step out of the masculine energy and step into the feminine energy. Masculine energy is go-getter by nature. Feminine energy is receptive by nature. And this is the yin-yang. That is the duality, the balance in all things. And your role right now, your job right now, is to really just call things in without feeling like you need to be in this like hustle or grind mode. 
Now, I'm not sure if you've been doing the dating apps. I'm not sure if you've been just, you know, going on a thousand dates all the time. Like if you're exhausted by just going on date after date after date, it's almost like you need to call back in your energy right now and ask yourself, am I doing this because I'm trying to fill a void or because I'm afraid of being alone or because I'm afraid that the time is ticking and my biological clock is click, you know, clicking, clocking, whatever I'm trying to say there, ticking, you know, whatever it is, like, it almost makes me feel like you're doing too much and you need to do less. So even if you're not going on all these dates, maybe you're like just continuously thinking in your head, like, why am I not attracting love? What's happening? Is something wrong with me? And so on and so forth. The reason I'm sharing all of this before even getting into your reading is because of the hanged man. The hanged man is Piscean energy by nature, Neptunian energy, and we do have Pisces and Saturn right now. Pisces and Saturn expects you to work hard, expects you to, you know, put in that energy and make it feel like you need to, you know, hustle and work. However, that's Saturn on its own. Saturn and Pisces is the yin yang. It is the dreaming, right? The ethereal world, the dreamer world, the manifesting world of Pisces and bringing it into action with a fe with a masculine energy of doing. So Pisces being feminine and Saturn being uh, masculine. And the hanged man, I always see this line in regards to the hanged man. <laughs> The hanged man is, and I'm laughing because of the king of cups underneath. The hanged man, my favorite phrase for this card is inaction will lead you to action. The less that you do, the more that you will able, be able to understand what to do next. Sometimes when we get into these like energies of panic or fear or uncertainty or insecurity, we feel like we got to do all the things in order to receive, when in reality, what we just need to do is take a step back and acknowledge how much work we've actually done. And that maybe in these moments of contemplation, of self-reflection, of stillness, the answer will become clearer to us. And I love that the King of Cups is right under here because it makes me feel like when you become emotionally secure and emotionally balanced, in what you want, you're going to manifest it, which is going to be my next line. Okay, so there we are getting some confirmation from the cards and we haven't even really dived too deep into your cards here. I also want to point out the fact that we're starting off your reading with a six of swords. So I do feel like this person is coming towards you right now, potentially in their own lives, they may be going through some tumultuous times, specifically around their frame of mind or their mindset. And there is an energy here of moving towards calmer roads ahead. Perhaps the reason you two hadn't met yet is because this person did to complete their own tasks, do their own work, and so did you. And you see here that this person is going to calmer waters and bringing two aces, an offer, stable, secure, and clarity, communication, words. And I'm also interested in the fact that we got the Queen of Swords here. So in regards to, before we dive into the second line here, and be before we, we dive deeper, I want to pull out some astrology info. So we've got Pisces here. We've got Libra, Aquarius, Gemini, really showing up here with the swords. We have Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. And then we also have more Gemini, Virgo energy with a magician here. So I do feel like communication is actually going to be happening a lot faster than you think it's going to be happening. However, going back to the original thing that I said, this is about you opening up to receiving. Because soul is all about illuminating your light and trusting that you will attract like moth to a flame. I know moths isn't necessarily the most beautiful thing, but like moths to a flame, the more that you shine your light, the more that things will come into you, okay? And you just have to have love and confidence within yourself to bring this in. I do feel like this communication is actually going to bring up a lot of I don't want to say delusions, but almost like fears, like um how can I explain this to you? Uh, so I don't know if you all watch Dollface uh, on Crave. It's a really great show. But one of the characters there, and she actually reminds me of a cancer energy so much. Um, 
and the moon here is kind of reminding me of her. So she, I don't want to spoil the whole show for you, but I'll basically tell you this character. Maybe this will help you understand the story. So she has this really amazing boyfriend, this partner, but she feels like she's not good enough for him. And, you know, he's attractive, he's well off, so on and so on. And so her insecurities continue to rise up in the connection because she feels like she's not deserving of him. And so I think when this person comes in to give you an offer or to have a conversation or even like the first interaction that you all have, also, I don't think that you know this person from before. Um, I think this is a brand new person. I feel like when they come in, one of the things that's going to happen for you is that you're automatically going to get don't want to use the word triggered either, but you're going to get insecure. Almost like, oh, they're really attractive. Oh, they've got like a good head on their shoulders. Oh, it's no possible way that they're going to be attracted to me. Oh, like they're not, they're, they're not attracted to me. They're not into me. I think I'm just like creating the whole story in my head, but no, darling, absolutely not. Because with the four of wands and the judgment card here, this is something that's destined for you. You are destined to be with this person. You are destined to meet them. You are destined to work through your fears, your insecurities, your uncertainties when it comes to love with this person. And this feels like a very healing relationship where this person's actually going to really help you in understanding how important it is for you to love yourself authentically and unapologetically. I also feel like this person is going to help you to work through some of the codependency, some of the fears, some of the limiting beliefs, some of the insecurities that you have. And the reason why I say this is because the sword is facing down towards the devil. So it almost makes me feel like this person's energy, very logical also, by the way, like they they need mental stimulation. Um, they need to have constant conversation. Like that's something that's very um important for them in a connection but they when they come in what they're actually going to be doing is cutting through a lot of the illusions that you're not worthy they're they're going to make you realize that the people that told you in the past that you were not lovable simply just didn't love themselves and that this person truly just appreciates you values you and wants something very stable and secure with you because they love you um, and because they see who you are, imperfections and all, and they value that about you. So I love that you got this for the astrology card. We're going to pull out another one as well. This is the house of the higher learning, elevated thought, as well as expansion. It covers long distance travel, foreign languages. It's higher learning. It's inspiration. It's spirituality, philosophy, religion, ideals, morals, ethics. It is Sagittarius and Jupiter ruled. This person may actually travel or be very philosophical or be a teacher of some sort. Okay. That's how they actually may help you. You may even meet that way as well. The next card you got here is trine, which tells me that your connection is going to be very fluid. It's going to be very easy. It's going to feel very comfortable and it's going to feel very safe. You two will be able to understand each other on a very intellectual, philosophical, mental level. You know, uh, Jay Shetty talks about, I don't know what he calls them, but I call them the five pillars of love. Um, he talks about them being, you know, physical attraction, mental, emotional, spiritual, and financial. And right now, from this reading, I can tell you right away that the spiritual and the mental are very much in alignment with you too, okay? We haven't dived deeper into the reading to see more yet, but the mental and the spiritual, it's like... You finally met somebody that you can have these deep conversations with, that you can really express yourself on a deeper level and connect with each other on a, almost makes me feel like in the fifth dimension, on a higher plane, on a higher dimension. You may even at this time be seeing them in your mind's eye. You may be connecting with them in a different way. You might be feeling like you... Um, you can see them, you can hear them, okay? You might even have these moments where you sit on the couch and it's like you can kind of like envision them or like see them sitting there. It's very beautiful. It's like you're connecting on a higher level right now and that, that connection, that's what you need to just sit in that energy of knowing that you don't need to like go on these millions of dates Connect on that higher plane, on that fifth dimension, and bring that into the reality. Bring that into 3D. 
Look at that. The reunion. Soul recognition, collaboration, partnership, friendship, and the mystic rose. Compassion, devotion, humility, humanity, grace. Oh my goodness. At the bottom of the deck, I was only going to pull out two, but obviously I need to share this with you. Sacred union, beloved within inner and outer relationships. This is a beautiful, like when I'm telling you a beautiful, beautiful, deep connection, very cathartic. It's like, it's like you both needed to come together in order to complete a mission or in order to understand each other on a deeper level or in order to help each other heal and receive clarity. I feel like, you know, if we're looking at a time frame, quite frankly, I'm recording this in March. I would say by the fall, this person will be in your life. By the fall, this person will be in your life and will play a role. You could meet them while traveling or learning, okay? The traveling, the learning, maybe even a spiritual center of sorts could also be beneficial or could also be where you meet. In terms of looks, when I'm seeing this, these cards, I am seeing somebody who may be fair-skinned, okay? Um, fair skin and lighter hair. I am seeing someone who's very tall and lean. Um, and I'm talking like over six foot, okay? Very like long. And if they're a woman, like 5'10", five, 5'11", five, just very tall, but lean. There's a leanness to them. And while they may be muscular, like you can see their muscles, they don't have bulky muscles. They're very lean in their muscles. Even if you look at the devil's muscles, they just seem very tall. Like all the cards are very tall cards and lean, okay? And the fairer skin. I, I actually was called to use my son's spirit animal deck to see the type of energy that they have and the type of energy that you have. So I'm gonna pull out two of these, okay? One for you and one for them. I don't use this deck often, so you will have to uh, be patient with me because I am gonna be reading the messages from the actual deck. So this is you. Oh, you got eagle. Awesome. I love that. And it's power, creation, illumination, exploration. So I love that, you know, we're talking about the eagle's ability to see beyond, right? A bird's eye view. It's also interesting because it kind of reminds me of the hanged man a little bit. You know, eagles aren't always flying. Eagles, similar to hawks, they perch themselves and they observe and they know when to go after their prey or when to move. They, this is courage. This is bravery. This is trusting. And if you read the little story here, the little blurb, I don't want to you know, read all of it for you, but it talks about in Nor uh, Northwest Native American myth, it talks of the eagle setting out with the uh, coyote to the land of the dead to retrieve the spirits of the deceased. And I almost feel like this is, you know, we got healing again here. We've got power and influence, creator of all things, journeys. This is about you trusting in the unknown, surrendering to the journey and knowing that through this journey, I'm going to put you here, through this journey of just being without needing to do, you will attract. And let's get your person. The cow. So the symbolism for the cow is fertility, purity, and divinity. And I did talk about this being a very divine union. Look how beautiful this card is, this imagery. Wealthy here, there's money, there's gold, there's abundance here to be had, that's for sure. And just quickly reading through some of the key words that talk about the cow, it's talking about its sacredness, its purity, its fertility. It's talking about the female power in nature. It's talking about being able to conceive the food, the abundance that comes from the cow, right? Like cows offer milk, butter, yogurt, and then the meat in itself, right? Or they could be used as a vessel to travel from point A to point B or to carry things. Things. There's also this beautiful um, connection here with Egypt and with India as well. And we had the Native Americans showing up here, the North and Western, I believe, with the eagle. So it does signify the travel again. I do feel like for some of you anyways, you may be at a distance from each other. Am I doing this the right way? 
Okay, I feel like we're just gonna do it like that, okay? Now, let's get into some love cards and see what else we can find out about your connection. Hmm, there's that retreat showing up again. Remember I said a spiritual center uh, and the spirituality, the disconnecting from the world with the hanged man again. Oh, look at that. Bingo, 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 bingo. Yes, that that blind faith, that deep surrender, that trusting. Whoop. Hmm. You know, I don't know. I, I kept wanting to say this to you earlier, and I just never got around to saying it. So before I pull out more cards and continue to get distracted, I'm going to mention this to you. Are you doing the things that you love? Are you, you know, going to spiritual centers, going on spiritual retreats, um, going to spiritual events? I don't know. Go, where do you love? Like, what do you love to do? Are you going to libraries? Are you reading? Are you going to bookstores? I almost get this sense, this energy here that for you during this time, it's really about you doing the things that you love, retreating from feeling like you need to be in that action of dating, right? Or like continuously meeting people and pulling back in your energy, doing the things that you love. And that's how this person will come into you. There's really a deep spiritual connection here. You will even have children with these people, with this people, with this person, sorry. Yeah, this is um, this is someone who, for those of you that are older watching this, this is somebody who's going to make you feel much younger. They're going to remind you of your youth. They're going to remind you of like what it's like to be young again. Two of cups, three of wands. Wow. Yeah. Together, you guys are just going to have this beautiful, beautiful connection. The hermit. It's interesting, too, that the stay optimistic about your love life and the hermit introspection. This is about tuning into that inner wisdom, that maturity. Because I'm not going to take that because that didn't fall on the table. Um, because I find sometimes you may feel like you have a little bit of monkey mind. And that's why the universe is saying to you, trust your intuition, love yourself, believe the journey, believe in the journey. Ace of Wands. So we got three aces now. Wands, uh, swords, and um, pentacles. Ooh, and this last one. There he is again, King of Cups. This person is in judgment again. So you have repeating cards here. The King of Cups and the Judgment card are very important cards. For those of you that like to study tarot, go sign up to Starcy Academy. My tarot courses are actually launching soon and I'm breaking them down into modules. So depending on how you want to learn, the course is going to be available to you in that way. Um, you can purchase the whole certification or just the modules and learn different things. One of the things you need to understand is when you continuously see repeating cards show up in readings for you, they are bringing through a very important message. So I would strongly encourage you to research what the judgment card is all about. And I would strongly encourage you to research what the um, King of Cups card is all about. Um, you know, there's a ton of different websites online about it, but learning about these two uh, archetypes and these two energies will really help you to have these aha moments and will help you to attract this individual into your life because you are definitely going to be experiencing a new relationship sooner than anticipated. All right, group number one, if you want to book a session with me and get a reading or an Akashic Records reading or anything else in between, take a look at the description box below, okay, or join the Starcy Academy, pick up your amulets, or go watch videos over on my other channel for spirituality, uh, love, self-love, etc. Um, yeah, I'm going to move on to group number two now. Thank you so much. We will see you later, alligator. Peace out. Bye.
Hello, group number two. This is going to be your reading if you picked group number two or the beautiful Davina from Star Sea Jewels. You can go pick that up in the description box below if you're called to this amulet. All right. Okay. So I got to tell you, as I was laying down the cards, I kept getting this message over and over and over and over and over and over again. And you're not going to like it, but I'm going to say it to you anyways. Um, this person that is going to be the next person that you're going to have a connection with, a relationship with, you already know them. And I don't think you're seeing them. And I think it has something to do with the fact that they aren't necessarily your usual type. And so because they're not your usual type, You kind of are just la la la, ignoring, blinded, la 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 la. But um, don't do that because they're literally right in front of you, okay? This person could be a Cancer, or they could be a Pisces, a Leo. Leo showing up a lot here, uh, Aries or um, Sagittarius. This is somebody that you've either known for a long time in your life, you have had previous lives with before, or you've known from your childhood. This person is somebody very fit, somebody very suave, okay, uh, knows how to dress, um, has a certain aura to them. I almost want to turn around and say that they may have like a bit of a cockiness to them, and or like an arrogance, or like that's how they're perceived uh, because of the King of Wands showing up here in the chariot the, and the sun and even the high priestess. Like, I just feel like this person just knows they're the, sh you know, like they know they're good. They know they're attractive. They know they got their life together. They know they're like a catch. And I think that might rub you off, off the wrong way. Like you might feel like, oh, they're arrogant or, oh my God, they just, you know, they think they're a thing or like they're a player or whatever it is. And so you have these preconceived notions about this person. But here's the thing. Assumptions make an ass of you. Okay. So don't assume. Okay. Don't assume. Because... I think this person is actually a very sweet, gentle person. I think this person has, you know, a very loving nature, a provider, a protector, a charmer. Like, they'll be the ones to sweep you off your feet and not in a love bombing way. They're like, make sure that you're taken care of. They're going to be the one who's, you know, going to pick you up at the house and get you flowers and open the doors for you and pay for dinners and do the, um words of affirmation and the acts of service. Like, I feel like this person wants to take care of someone, wants to play that masculine role um, in someone's life. I am feeling like this person is very masculine. So even if they're feminine, they're still masculine. There's a lot of masculine energy here with the chariot and the sun and the king of wands, even though there's woman imagery in, this, in these decks. So they're just masculine cards, right? Like the chariot is yes, ruled by cancer. So in that essence, it's feminine, but the chariot is very go-getter energy um, and go-getter energy that like um, sometimes be a little bit controlling as well. Okay. So now those are just the things that you have to like keep in mind um, that this person will want to really move things along quickly. But the reason why I'm saying to you that you're kind of like, no, I'm not sure. Like, I'm not sure how I feel about that is because of the two of swords. You're sitting in this energy here where you're not really wanting to see. You would prefer to not see. You would prefer to la 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 la. I don't want to accept that this is my person. What's going to end up happening for you, though, is the more that you start tuning in and seeing them, because I do feel like they are in your vicinity right now, school, gym, work, neighborhood, whatever, you're going to actually start getting downloads. They're going to start visiting you in your dreams. You may already be having dreams about them and going like, what the hell is happening right now? And with that Davina here, this is, um, they're going to help you tune into your divine feminine energy. Mm -hmm. 
they have so much to give. They have this energy of like excitement and sunshine and a dawn of a new day. And they want to take you on adventures and they want to show you off. They want to show you the world, you know, like Aladdin, I can show you the world on the magic carpet like that. Okay. However, I feel like when they make a move towards you, okay, which I do feel will happen around the summertime, I think something's going to happen during the summertime, whether you guys end up like running into each other randomly and you have to talk or you bump into each other, like just some weird thing happens. With the Page of Swords and the Nine of Wands, what's actually going to happen here is... I almost feel like... You're showing up to me as the page of swords for whatever reason. I almost get this energy that you're going to be like, mm -hmm. okay, what are you trying to sell me here? Like, you know, you're trying to sell me on something. I'm not really sure that I'm buying it. Are you sure you don't say that to everybody else? Like, you've almost got this very, like, I don't want to say defensive, but like very guarded energy to you. But they're going to be like, listen, I will offer you every damn lipstick until you take one of them because I want to be with you. Try them all. It's you that I want. Like, they're going to do it all above and beyond for you. They're going to do whatever they can to get you to um, be with them. I, I think this person is just a, an individual who, yeah, they could have anybody that they want. Having said that, though, when they make a decision that this is the person they want to either marry or be in a long-term relationship with, then like the game changes for them. Like their mindset goes from like, I don't need to, you know, sleep around, whatever. Like I'm willing to pull back from everybody else because this is the person that I want. There's something very divine about you. I don't know if you have Pisces cancer placement or if you've really been tapping into your divine feminine energy, but there's something about you that just makes you very different. And they like that. I do feel like you're very independent. And you're very mysterious. You're very much um, the type of person who just doesn't give everybody the time of day like you're just like I am me and step up or f off kind of energy you know like I'm not gonna accept mediocrity look at that the chariot the four of wands they definitely and the nine of pentacles they definitely want to and the queen of pentacles they want to wife you up man they definitely want to wife you up or husband you up whatever they want they want to be with you they want to be with you. They want something very solid. They want something very committed with you. They want to see if the opportunity exists for you to, to really take it the distance. Lunar eclipse, releasing the past, breakthrough, pushing limitations, and healing. Void, of course, pause in time, change of plans, limbo, improvisation, improv, improvisation. Oh my gosh, that was so hard to say. Um, yeah, it's very interesting too, because it makes me feel like when I see that void, of course, and that two of swords, right, that indecision, it makes me feel like you're the one putting a pause on this. Whether you consciously, consciously acknowledge it or not, you are kind of delaying this connection coming into place because there's something here that you have to work through. You know, as I'm talking and as I'm sharing this, I keep hearing some of you go, oh, I know who it is, but like, I don't know. I don't want to. I'm like, Ugh, blah, blah. like there's this like hesitancy towards it, but more because you're like, I know this is my person. And I know that when I like open myself up and I'm no longer in this like, no, 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 I'm not gonna pay attention this is it it's I'm gonna I'm gonna have to do the hard work see because relationships before I get into the cards because relationships are work <laughs> excuse me when you choose to commit to somebody when you choose to be in a relationship you have to do the work you have to step up and that is scary it is scary to acknowledge that you will probably be triggered in the relationship. You're probably going to have to work through some stuff. You're probably going to have to face some insecurities, some uncertainties, some, you know, 
issues, challenges, you're going to have to be vulnerable. You're going to have to have blind faith. You're going to have to trust. And holy cow, that is work. And so what's happening here is the universe is going, yeah, that's work. Yeah, you're going to have to do all that. Yep, 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 yep. And it's time now. You can't dilly-dally anymore. You can't deny. You can't pretend it doesn't exist. You can't hold back anymore. You have to do it. And I think that's where some of your, ins not insecurity, it's like a hesitancy. Where the door is right in front of you and you're like, I don't know if I'm ready to open it. But it's time, my love. It is time. The universe is literally saying, here is your person. Hmm, look at that. The child within, inner mother, innocence, gentleness, tenderness. This is about you being soft with yourself. This is about you being gentle with yourself. And plant yourself here, integration, embodiment, grounded action. <laughs> Talk about taking action. Hmm? Talk about taking action. For those of you that know who this person is, because I've got a big feeling that a lot of people in group number two know exactly who this person is. This isn't somebody who's ignored you before. This isn't somebody who's been playing games with you. No, 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 no. This is somebody who... You, they try to come in and you've kind of stepped back. They've tried to come in. And now the question becomes is, are you gonna let them in? Are you ready? Are you ready to do this? Are you ready to have these conversations? Are you ready to be vulnerable with somebody? Are you ready to open yourself up to receiving the, you know, love? It's the highest expression. It's beautiful. It's pure. It's this person has, you know, yes, they may be a charmer. Yes, they may know how to work a crowd, whatever. But above everything else, they're a good person and they want to be able to give to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I am going to go ahead and pull, um, this is actually my son's deck, it's his animal spirits deck, uh, and I don't know, I was called to use it today, so we're going to use it. This is going to be you, and then we're going to get one for them, and we'll dive into it. Oh my god, look at you. Oh, interesting. If you were kind of toying between group number one and group number two, go take a look at group number two because they all are group number one, sorry, because they also got the cow for uh, their person. So let's read you first, okay? So you got the frog. Frogs may mean something to you, but frogs are feminine energy. Creation. Uh, I'm going to sneeze also. Achoo! Bless me. The frog is a creature of the water and has been associated with new life. The abundance of frogs are connected with the Nile. So there's a connection here to Egypt as well. I don't want to read all of this here, okay? There's a Lord over water, feminine energy, okay? So the frogs also associated with the moon, feminine energy. We've been talking about that, okay? It's very interesting here. You know, I almost feel too, especially because we have the child within and the son, it almost, almost makes me feel like, I'm not sure if some of you had a difficult upbringing with your mom and you want to have kids, but there's like this level of hesitancy about having kids. And whenever you think about that, 
you think in your mind, like what happened with, you know, your mom and you're like, I don't want to repeat the patterns. I don't want the same thing that happened with my mom to happen here. And, you know, you, you kind of loop yourself into the story. So you rather just be in avoidance. And I think this is about you connecting with the child within, having that gentleness, that tenderness, that love, that compassion, forgiveness for yourself, and knowing that you are creation, you are fertility, and you are not going to do the same things that your mom did to you. And the cow, first, let's talk about the abundance here. Okay, definitely abundance, definitely abundance here. And the key words or the symbolism is fertility, purity, and divinity, okay? There's also a connection to Egypt as well. So I'm not sure if you've been wanting to go to Egypt because Egypt is showing up here a lot. There's abundance here to be had with the cow because if you think about it, the cow has the milk, the milk that can be converted to butter and yogurt, and then the meat in itself or the cow in itself could be a vessel to transport things. And so there's a lot of abundance here. There's a lot of purity here too. Like I think this person gets a bad rep just simply because they're very attractive and they're charmers. And so I feel like they get a bad rep. And you know what? Maybe, maybe at one point they were players, but that was just because they weren't ready to settle down. I don't feel like this person is toxic, narcissistic, abusive. None of that's showing up. Look at that soulmate. Honestly, group number two, if you were, if you even had like the tiniest inclination to watch group number one, um, do it. Okay. So look at this. Let go of control issues. What did I tell you about you not, um, not technically being attracted to them here there's that unrequited love there's not enough attraction or chemistry to keep this relationship going I honestly feel like this is them trying and you just having walls up right after give your relationship a chance literally Um, listen, I did a video over on my other channel, Charlene Lizette, if you want to go subscribe over there where I talked about the fact that you don't need to date ugly guys if you are not attracted to somebody don't date them. Okay. But I think if you're really honest with yourself, you are attracted to this person. I think you're more, I don't know if the word is annoyed or like you don't like their personality. It's something to do. That's not right either. I think it's the perception that they give up. So you've assumed you created a narrative. You've created a story about this person. I feel like when you look at them, you're attracted to them. I feel like there's parts of them that you admire or like, you know, you're like, yes, yeah, person's a high value person or, you know, yeah. But then it's the fact that you know that they know that they're good looking that bothers you. And I think that's something internally that you got to work through. Because I think if you gave them a chance, give your relationship a chance, you'd see how much passion there is. This person's your soulmate. It's the fact that you've got to learn how to let go of the control issues here. Right. I think there's a bit of a fear here. And so you're letting the fear drive you instead of just opening yourself up to love. Page of Pentacles. If you opened yourself up to this person, don't be surprised if you fall madly in love with them. Because the Page of Pentacles in this card is all about that. It's like this like deep love. The Wheel of Fortune, like go of control issues. Again. Ace of Wands. It's like you're not, you're not even seeing what's right in front of you. So much passion, so much love. Four of Cups. See, it's almost like you're like, no, step back. When instead you should be, yes, come in. And I think you need to ask yourself five, five of pentacles. Yeah. And this deck is actually not connected in the sun at the bottom again. So I would actually, whenever cards show up um, repetitively in a reading, it's a big message for you. So I would encourage you to go read about the sun, advice, characteristics, the, um, the symbolism, okay, everything to do with the energy of the sun. And the reason for this is because the sun has shown up now here and here. And there's something to be said about the energy of the sun. 
Now, this particular deck is not the same as the traditional tarot, okay? And the Five of Pentacles actually talks about the fact that there is still passion, there is still love, there is still music here that can be played. It's the fact that two people have to give each other a chance. Get to know this person before pushing them away. Not your perception or your assumption of them, but rather get to know them. And then if you still don't find that you're attracted to them or you still find that you're not interested in them or whatever, then that's fair. But I feel like this person, it plays a very important role in your life. And I don't, whether you like it or not, I think that this person is going to enter into your life and play a significant role. It's just you're delaying the inevitable. All right, group number two, if you want to book a reading with me, if you want to get the Akashic Records read, if you want to dive into your spiritual journey or need support in your awakening journey, take a look at the description box below and book a reading with me. If you want to pick up your amulet or join Star Sea Academy and take my courses, you can do that as well, all in the description box below. I'm going to move on to group number three now. Thank you so much. We will see you later, alligator. Peace out. Bye. <laughs> Hello, group number three. This is going to be your reading. If you pick the beautiful Bridget and uh, the one of the first decks I ever actually owned. That's very similar to uh, Raider Way. I can't remember the name of this author. I'm so sorry, but it is in the description box below if you're curious. Um, listen, so we're diving into what's coming up for you in love, right? What, uh, who is coming in love predictions? And we've got a lot more cards to go through. Now, I'm starting off this reading in a very different way. And there's a reason for this. As soon as I started pulling out these cards, a continual message re like kept repeating itself in my mind's eye. And then when I saw the judgment, everything kind of clicked together. And I actually didn't even check what was under the judgment. And it's the Ten of Swords and the Five of Wands. This is something very faded. This is something that you have to go through. You're going to have to experience this. You're going to have to go through this journey and learn from it. You're going to have to answer the call from the universe and go through this process as part of your evolution, as part of your growth, as part of your expansion, as part of your own like spiritual evolution, your own spiritual journey. I can't tell you what the outcome is going to be of this situation. This reading is actually very different than the other ones I've done. And the reason why I can't tell you a certain outcome or something that I'm seeing is because of the hermit card at the bottom here. It's almost like there is a story here to tell, and I will tell you the things that will come up, but the outcome, the, the finality of it, right? Like where it's going to lead to, that is something that only you will be able to determine group number three. No one else can tell the, uh, foretell this for you. And the reason for this is because it's part of you learning to tune in, tap in, and step into a very powerful version of yourself this is almost like a it feels very rite of passage it makes me feel like this is part of you having to evolve and grow and the and, and around your love life around the choices you make the partners you choose the relationships you get into you know that kind of stuff and there's no, there's no getting around this. It's almost like the universe is like, you have to go through this as part of your journey. The two things that really stuck out to me were the two pages and the three queens. And yeah, we've got the seven of swords. We're going to talk about that for a minute, okay? There are a lot of people here. And I'm not sure if you are the type of person who tends to kind of have a lot of people on the roster, you know, uh, maybe date a lot of people, maybe, um, maybe you're into poly, maybe, you know, um, you feel like you continuously need to, you know, be around somebody or be dating multiple people as part of your self-worth. 
However, the thing I'm seeing here that's really, really sticking out to me is the three queens. I don't know why, but I keep getting this call to, uh, I don't know if you all know Hecate or uh, Ed Morgan, the Morgan. The representation of the three queens, the three that turn into one. Um, the maiden, the crone, and the, I'm trying to think what the third one is, but it's slipping my mind right now. Maiden, the something, and the crone. I can't, the middle one, I'm having a hard time remembering. But that's what I'm seeing here. And if you know what I'm talking about, sorry, my mind's like, my mind's really foggy. Even as I'm sitting here, it's like, it's almost like there's this fog in my mind around your reading. And I keep getting pulled to this, the hermit. I don't know if you've been watching a lot of these videos trying to get clarity into your love life. It's almost like you're wanting to get answers outside, but you're needing to go inside. Now, this reading is supposed to be about who's coming in. And I've got a feeling that you have a lot of people that are already in. And if you don't, um, you will have a lot of people in your life shortly. But it's almost like a test that you're going through. I'm seeing two younger people here, potentially a fire sign and a water sign. I'm seeing females here. I'm also seeing somebody here who... Tends to want to keep a lot of people around with that seven of swords here out of their own gratification. Because they're afraid to commit to someone. It's almost like this entire journey that you're going to experience next in love, like what's coming in for love, is you learning to love yourself above all else. Mm -hmm. to respect yourself, to honor yourself. Bridget isn't necessarily a romantic piece, but I was really called to use it. Bridget is about networking. It's about meeting people. It's about talking to different people and these different people helping you with your career advancement. And look at all these people here. It's almost like a rite of passage for you to learn to use discernment when it comes to love. If this is resonating, leave it in the, in the comments below. Honestly, I was not expecting this reading to come out. And then as soon as I was pulling these cards out, I was like, whoa, what is what important message needs to come out here? I think this is going to happen a lot faster than you anticipate. So if there's like no one in your life, don't be surprised if all of a sudden within the next month or so, you start getting like offers, 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 offers coming in. I don't know if you're the type of person who like, when they meet somebody, they're immediately like, that's my person. You know, like you have maybe like fall into lust very quickly, or maybe you have codependency issues or had them. This is almost making me feel like the universe is putting a lot of people in front of you so that you can realize that you are a catch. And that you don't have to settle for just anyone. And that you literally have a plethora of options of people to choose from when it comes to your love life. That you don't need to just accept the first offer. And that just because you're not getting any offers doesn't mean you're not worthy. It's about learning here how to sit on your throne comfortably on your own without needing to feel like somebody else needs to prop you up. It's a reminder that you prop yourself up. It's a reminder that you are in charge of you. 
and no one can take that from you. It's this understanding that even if you were to have all these multiple offers, it doesn't mean that any of them you need to commit to or you need to give them any more of your time or energy if you're not into them. See, because the hermit is illuminating this whole journey. If I was, the reason these cards aren't spread out straight across is just because of space, right? But if I was to put these cards straight, the hermit at the end literally illuminates every single card here. It's a rite of passage. It's you maturing. It's you growing. It's you learning. It's you realizing how fertile you are, how successful, how beautiful, how intuitive you are. It's you reclaiming your power. It's you remembering that of course you would have multiple offers. Of course many people would be into you. Why? Because you're a catch. But just because there are all these people that are into you doesn't mean you give them all your the time of day. It doesn't mean that you give them all your energy. It's like, I don't know if in the past you felt like because somebody was into you, you needed to go on a date with them. You needed to entertain them. You needed to hang out with them. You know, you needed to do that kind of stuff. But there's this learning here that's happening in this reading. That you don't need to do that. That in fact, if let's just say you're standing in the energy of the Queen of Wands and the Page of Cups comes into your life. If you're not into the Page of Cups, you don't have to give them energy. If you're into the Page of Wands, yeah, okay, you can give them energy. You don't have to spill the, the beans. You don't have to tell them everything that you're feeling, that you're thinking. You don't need to chase. You don't need to do any of that. You just need to be you. Because I feel part of the reason why right now a lot of the relationships that you've been in haven't worked out is because you're trying to fill your own cup with other people rather than filling your cup by yourself. And so you're offering or receiving these cups that are empty, that they're not, they're not in alignment with you. It's like, let's just say you don't like drinking whiskey. You like wine. All these people are offering you whiskey and you're just taking it and you're like, I hate whiskey. Why am I drinking this? I don't even want to drink it. I want to drink wine. And I'm using the, this analogy because it was the one that came up and, you know, please don't take offense to it. Like it's nothing to do with like alcohol and alcoholism. I'm just explaining something from that perspective because I know sometimes, you know, people tend to take things the wrong way. It's like, it's like somebody offering something that you don't want, but yet you're still accepting it because you feel bad not accepting it. This is about you learning not to accept the things you don't want. If the Page of Cups doesn't have everything you want, if the Page of Wands, if the Queen of Cups, if the Seven, if they don't have those things that you want, you don't take them. That's what you're needing to learn next in love. It's like you've got the power, not them, you. Gemini. The, like the amount of communication, the amount of people that are going to be entering into your life, the amount of conversations. Over at my school, Starcy Academy, take a look at the description box below. There's actually, um, if you go into the courses section, I'm actually going to link it directly. Um, there is a free uh, course. It's a worksheet to download. It's a digital download. And I offer it for free and it's called the values exercise. And when you download it for free, you get to like see what the values exercise is all about. I would strongly encourage you to do that. It's free. There's no cost to you, but it will help you so much in getting to know who you are and what you need in a relationship and in life. And I think in doing that exercise, when you're, when you're done it, when you complete it, you're going to turn around and go, oh, okay. Like I've been attracting A, B, C, D, E, F, G because I didn't even realize that these were my actual values. These were the actual things that I wanted in my life. And the next uh, astrology card you got is four. I belong. The home of the, the house of the origins. Here's where we see our home, bloodline, feelings of safety, comfort, mother, figure, tradition, lifestyle. It also shows where we come from. So I am wondering if growing up, you really had to perform or put on a mask for other people rather than really tune in and tap into your desires, what you want, what you, what you need as part of your life. And the next thing that's coming up in love for you is you learning about yourself, 
learning to love yourself. For some of you, if you've been really stuck in your career, mm-hmm. Look at this. Wow. The return, a new story, you decide, alignment, it's coming together. Oh, and the next card. Wow. Lineage of the Rose. Hold on. Wait, it fell down on the ground. Moved by the goddess, here for this soul call gather. This is you learning to love you. And you know what's funny too? Um, the well, not necessarily that's funny, it's just a is it a coincidence or is it alignment? The values exercise is actually part of a bigger course. I've just taken that part and pulled it out as a free um as a free offer to help people out. And the course that it's actually a part of is called Align. And Align is actually going to be available at the school soon, at the academy soon. So it's interesting that there's like an alignment here happening for you. I don't know if you've been feeling stuck in your life. I don't know if you've been feeling unhappy in your life. I don't know if you've been feeling stagnant, living in scarcity. You know, maybe you're not necessarily happy in your career and your and you know your day to day. This is this reading right now is literally leading you to self love, which will help you to really transform your life and on all these different aspects and all these different places. I'm gonna pull up um, an animal card for the person that's going to enter into your life that's going to kind of trigger this catalyst or this this transition and a card for you so I always do you first and then I do them next okay so you are coming in at whoa what is this is that the goat oh the bull renewal fertility growth look at this And so I'm not going to read this whole thing, but I just wanted to quickly, so it's ancient Greece, these rituals. Oh, okay. So the bulls were uh, worshipped as a supreme deity. Uh, the, it's all about renewal. Huh. This is interesting. Uh, the Minotaur. Spanish bullfight, uh, a vestige of the ancient bull sacrifice. So this is almost about you. It, it's like a cycle of life here. A cycle of renewal is what I'm getting. It's you understanding your power. It's you kind of turning around and going, wait, where do I give my energy, my power away in love? Let's get the card. Okay, so you got two cards and it makes sense because you've got literally like 7 billion people coming into your life. Maybe not that many, but a lot. So one is the dolphin. Life, feminine energy and sexuality. So that makes sense. Maybe somebody's entering into your life where they're going to um, really be getting you to tune into maybe maybe in the past you were somebody who just slept around a lot and now you're realizing that that wasn't helping you or serving you for your highest good. Like that you ended up feeling depleted and drained rather than empowered. Okay. And then the next one is the ram. Sacrifice, growth, divine life. And there's that growth, right? To me, when I look at this ram, I can't help but feel like you're kind of get, getting clear, right? Where, where, where do I need to let go of? Where do I need to start something new? Right? Aries, the first in the zodiac. They're the leader. They're the initiator. Let's get some romance cards and see what's going on here. I do feel like a lot of people, maybe these two are, you know, the dolphin could be the page of cups and the ram could be the page of wands. That would make sense. Water and fire. Maybe those two are coming in. Those two people are coming in. Maybe the women in your life, um, you know, growing up didn't necessarily, uh, not because of any fault of their own, just because of their own upbringing, didn't teach you how to be empowered. Your love life is affected by children. Stay optimistic. Very soon, clearly decide what you want so it comes to you now. There's that, again, Do go do that values exercise. It's literally, it's free, literally. You've got nothing to lose. It's all about self-development. That's too many cards. Can I get? So look at that. This could be the one and soulmate.
So the wheel of fortune is changing. Maybe you have kids. The hanged man having off. These cards are actually not like the Raider weight, by the way. The descriptions of them, if you ever Google them. So I'm just gonna pull them all out, and I want to see what they're um, what they're talking about here. No, I just need one, please. Why? Okay. Well, ten of swords and the lovers. Those two ones will come out together very soon. Four of Cups, this could be the one. And the Emperor Soulmate. Ay, ay, ay. It's a very peculiar reading indeed. You got to let me know what the scoop is with your love life in the comment section, okay? The Hanged Man, the Wheel of Fortune, Ten of Swords, the Lovers. You know, the Emperor is all about... <laughs> you taking charge. There's that Aries energy again, right? The leader. So I don't know if you're an Aries, okay, if you have, have a uh, prominent Aries energy. But to me, this all goes back to this whole values exercise. And the reason for this is because an emperor understands how to run their empire because they know what they want. They know what they desire. They know what they want to attract. And the four of cups with the this could be the one, I think right now there's just, there's like a haze. Remember in the beginning I said to you, I feel like hazy and date, like it feels very like I'm kind of walking through this like, you know, fog. I feel like right now, because you're unclear of what your needs are, what your values are, your negotiables, your non-negotiables, what you need in your life, etc. It's creating this fog around your love life. And so you feel very torn, 10 of swords and the lovers here. The 10 of swords is all about betrayal in this card. It's betrayal and ending. And I don't know if you went through a very difficult breakup or maybe you had a, you know, toxic relationship or whatever, but there's this energy here about you needing to learn how to empower yourself, how to fuel yourself in order to shift and move on. The wheel here with the children, you're, this is a rite of, this is like maturity. Are you going through your Saturn return? Did you just finish your Saturn return? Do you have Saturn transiting your first house? This makes me feel like you're growing up. You are maturing. You are stepping up. You are leveling up. The hanged man, stay optimistic about your love life. This is you um, taking a step back and realizing that there's no progression forward in your love life if you don't take a few steps back and really go inward at this time. And as soon as you do that, soulmate comes in. The right person for you because you got clear you got specific you you put down on a piece of paper exactly what you want to attract and so boom it comes to you now love this for you this is like probably the most empowering unromantic reading but most empowering all right group number three if you want to book a session with me if you want to download that free worksheet or that free um course or it's really a worksheet it's not a whole course um or any any other thing that you want to do pick up your amulet etc take a look at the description box below i'm going to move on to group number four now thank you so much we will see you later alligator peace out bye group number four this is going to be your reading if you pick the beautiful juno and or group number four um, <laughs> I'm a little bit speechless. I kind of wish I had a video of my reaction as the cards are coming down on the table before I started this reading because my jaw is on or was anyways on the floor. I don't know if you can see this. I'm sure you can. Um, are you ready? No, but let's have an actual conversation. Are you legitimately ready for this? Because you've been praying for this. You've been praying for this kind of love. You've been praying for this, 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 this. <laughs> I am speechless. When does that ever happen? Okay, you have been praying for this. And they are here. There is a Capricorn, Taurus, or Virgo energy that has their eye on you with that King of Pentacles. They are looking at you like fa fum fa fum fa fum fa fum. Their heart is 
wanting to explode for you. Like, actually, though. But you see, the King of Pentacles is romantic, but in their, like, acts of service kind of way. They are not a public displays of affection. They are not, like, they're not, like, you know, like that, okay? They're the type of uh, stoic energy where, you know, behind closed doors, they will smother you with love. They will take care of you. They will love you. They will take care of the house. They will pay the bills. It's very masculine energy. It's actually my personally, personally me, myself and I, that's what I want. Okay. Um, that's like that with the King of Cups together. Oof, oof. Okay. And this, this right here is like, yeah. It's like, yeah, I, I, I need a minute to compose myself because of things I am seeing. I don't know if you've been single for a long time or if you've always been the one to have to do all the work. And if you carry like these, I don't want to call them burdens, but a lot of responsibilities, you take care of everybody else. And guess what, babe, this person is going to come into your life and take care of you. They see you as the definition of a divine feminine woman. You are absolutely everything to them. Like, like dream, dream person, dream girl or dream guy, whatever. Dream, like perfect, the perfect, 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 perfect person. And with the lover's card here showing up, what I'm seeing is this is su such a divinely guided connection. It's so divinely guided. This is the universe bringing two people together. And that five of wands is this energy of being willing to fight for it. Or being willing to work for it. You know, like this is two people who are willing to do what needs to get done in order for the relationship to work. And I feel like things are going to be, you know, when we talk about timing, oof, sooner rather than later, with that Ace of Wands coming in. This is coming in hot and heavy. It might already be here. You might already feel it. You, you might already feel it to a degree. The two of, the, the two of, uh, of swords... This is, yeah, this is restoring balance into your life. I feel like a lot of you just haven't gotten laid or haven't had intimacy or a good person in your life in a very long time. Drop it in the comments. Let me know if that resonates. But the, the, there's this energy here of you really just tuning in and stepping in and, and being able to receive from that different place. And with the Wheel of Fortune here, things are changing dramatically. Pluto's entering Aquarius, I want to say on the 23rd of March. I don't know when you're watching this. Obviously, this is timeless. But yeah, whenever you're watching this, they're, yeah. They're, they're, this is like such crazy change in your life. And with the Knight of Wands, oh my God, and the Page of Wands and the Knight of Cups. Holy cow. This person is making their way to you. I feel like this person has been watching you for quite some time trying to figure out the right way to approach you, trying to figure out the right way to talk to you, trying to figure out the right way to have a conversation with you. Mm -hmm. And Whatever's, whatever's transpired in their own personal life, it's now shifted them into this place where, where they're ready. With the Knight of Wands, the Page of Wands, and the and the Knight of Cups, they're making their way to you. Absolutely.
there's like this energy of them feeling like I can't, I can't hold back anymore. So in terms of timing, months, not even. From the time you watch this, within a month, somebody will have come into your life. Uh, their looks, stoic, strong, absolutely attractive, charming, a good dresser. Okay, uh, very financially stable. Uh, I'm like, I don't know that they're like, I would say like anywhere between like 5'10", 5'11 and a half, something like that, maybe six feet, but no more than six feet. And I would turn around and say that they've got a nice build, a solid build. They work out, they take care of their body. Maybe you're meeting at the gym or I don't know, yoga, wherever you work out. Okay, out for a run, whatever. This is a connection where he will be the pursuer. I do feel like you're going to have to open up because you have your back face to him. So I'm seeing you as the empress and him as the king. If you feel like you're the king, then you're going to be the one pursuing. If you're the empress, you're going to have to open up a little bit to him. You kind of got to give him the green light so he doesn't feel, I don't want to say insecure because the king of pentacles doesn't feel insecure, but the king of pentacles is very calculated in their moves. And so they're not going to make a move if they don't feel like it's going to result in something favorable for them. So you have to kind of give him that like, hey, yeah. Make the move. I'm here. Let's talk. Let's let's start this. Let's have a conversation. That's what this feels like so much. Like I'm getting a little bit antsy sitting here with this energy. Let's keep going, okay? Because uh, I can feel you. I can feel your heart. I can feel your heart beating right now. I don't know if some of you already kind of have an idea of who this is. Releasing the past, breakthrough, pushing limitations, healing. I don't know if some of you have stayed single for a really long time because, you know, you're afraid of being hurt or you were hurt in the past and... You know, you needed to work on yourself or whatever, but I feel like you're ready now. First quarter, making decisions, obstacles, taking action, momentum. Yeah, here it is. Make the move. Whether it means that you're talking to them, whether it means that you're saying hi, whether it means that you're smiling. The child within, inner mother, innocence, gentleness, tenderness. And <laughs> say yes. Woo! Expand through the extremes. Trust life. Oh, when I tell you, my heart feels like it's going to blow up. Oh, my goodness. And, you know, you picked Juno. Juno in astrology is the asteroid for marriage. It's what we need in a partnership. So wherever Juno sits in your chart is the type of partner that you, like, you require. Oh, my goodness. So this is going to be, actually, you know what? Let me just shuffle first and tell you a little bit more about these cards. These are my son's cards. They're spirit animals, but I felt really called to, to tune into them. Um, I'm going to pull out a card for you and a card for them. So let me get a card for you. The goat had fallen out, but I wasn't really sitting with the energy. I just, I'm just feeling like this is, oh my goodness. Okay, so this is your card. The Jaguar, wholeness, divinity, rebirth. Here it is. Wow, look at this. So um, the Jaguar, especially in its Black Panther form, um, would help to yield powerful magic. I'm not going to read all this. Um, the shamans would invoke the Jaguar power to heal diseases or exact, uh, exact revenge on an enemy. Wow. 
there's the polarity within the energy. Oh, there was Jaguar people. But this to me is like, you're, you're coming out of the shell that you were in. The shell where maybe you were hiding, maybe you were feeling like, you know, you couldn't date or whatever that stuff was, right? I feel like you needed to go through some solitude and, and now it's time. Now it's time for you to step up. Now it's time for you to get in there and experience this connection. Let's see who this person is. Oh, it's too many cards. Let's get a card for this person. Oh, here it is. The gull. The seagull. Water, creation, emotions. Ha. Huh. In a Northwest Native American legend, an angry gull kills a raven, one of the most powerful totems. A great war waved is between the two. And the birds share power over the shore. Hmm, this is emotions. Interesting. Unrestrained emotion, creation and life. When I look at this card and I think about the King of Pentacles, it makes me feel like this person to the world shows up in one way, strong, silent type. But when they are in love with someone, when they care about someone, they have this ability to show this whole other side of them. A side of them that only certain people get to see. It's like it's like a treat, I guess you could say. Or like a reward. It's like it's like only for you. There's some you know what it also makes me feel? It makes me feel like you drive them crazy. Your energy makes them feel they are <laughs> they are a person who is so in control of their emotions. They are so in control of who they are as a person, but there's something about you. You drive them wild, wild. Hmm, flirt. See, you have to open up the airways here. You do. Children. You could have children. You could be a single mom or a single dad. Calling in your soulmate. very soon someone from the past is returning into your life you might know this person from the past or you may have had previous lives with them this is you flirting this is you putting out lighthearted energy here, okay? Get clear on, you know, what 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 do you want? What do you want with this person? You could be a mom or a dad, okay? You may are be ready to do that as well. And they are too. They are a provider. They are the epitome of a, like the, the if you're attracted to men, okay? They are the epitome of a provider, of a divine masculine. Like, exactly it. The calling in your soulmate, you, yeah, sit down and write exactly the type of person that you want. Let's get flirt five of cups. Yes, you have to see. Remember I was saying to you that you have to turn to them because right now your back is turned to them. The star. Yeah, you have to turn to them and let them know. You got to give them the green light. Five of, of Pentacles calling in your soulmate. These cards are not the same description as a Raider Waite. And in the Five of Pentacles, the card is, talks about the violin and the flowers. The fact that you have to instill the passion. Almost be delusional, in a sense, around that which you desire. Very soon. Justice and the Emperor. I told you, this, this is a manly man. If you're attracting the man, okay, is a manly man. If you are the man, you're a manly man. Reconciliation. What's this? I just need one, please. And with the Libra here, yeah, this is going to be some deep commitment. Four of Wands. Reconciliation. This is celebration. This is passion. Oh, my God. 
this connection is going to be one where there is going to be so much passion between the two of you. Absolutely. Like two people who can't get enough of each other. Literally. That's the energy that's showing up here. Two people who just can't get enough of each other. It is going to be a very beautiful, very romantic, a very stable, secure, loving, long-term relationship. This is solid. You have to turn to them though, okay? You have to open up yourself to that because it's here. It's about you turning and just turning around, like whether it's a hi, whether it's I want to introduce myself. That's it. Like you got to make that move. Sure do, buds. All right. If you want to book a reading with me, if you want to pick up your amulet, I'm wearing mine. Okay. Because we're attracting love. We're in that energy right now. Um, yeah, whatever you desire, uh, take a look at the description box below on different ways that you can work with me or support me. All right. That is your reading group number four. Thank you so much for your likes, your comments, your shares, your subscribes. We will see you later, alligator. Peace out. Bye.